Okay, so if you have the Beta FPV Air 65 or the Air 75 Express LS Edition and needed some help to set it up, like on the first time, this video is the one to show you how. I will guide you through how to connect the OOP to your Express LS radio. We will do some basic setup in beta flights. And at last, I will show you how to connect to your analog goggles. So this is a full setup guide. If you are a veteran pilot and already know like how to do all of this, you can just jump here to see the flight footage. All right, no more BS. Let's just jump right into the topic. So before we begin, we need to know what equipments we will be working on. The Air 65 and the 75 have a serial-based EOLRS receiver, which the EOLRS RX this time is soldered externally onto the flight controller. You can see it, it's this chip right here. Based on Beta FPV website, the ExpressLS firmware on this RX chip is already at ExpressLS 3.3.0, which means our radio will also be required to be flashed to ExpressLS 3.x version or above in order for them to bind together. Why is this? Because ExpressLS only will bind when they are at the same version of the RX and the TX. So 2.x to 2.x, 3.x to 3.x. Okay, so if you're unsure which ExpressLS firmware version is on your radio or if you needed to flash your ExpressLS firmware version on your radio to 3.x, Below is going to be a video to show you how to do so. It may not be the exact radio that you have, but it's going to be the same concept. Next, let's briefly talk about how to bind this drone and your radio together. So the binding methods. So the binding method we're going to be using today is going to be the binding phrase method. So essentially what binding phrase is, you set up a series of code on your RX and you set up the same exact code on your radio. And once you power up, both your drone and your radio, they're just going to automatically bind together. You don't have to hit a my button whatsoever. So basically, that's what binding phrase is for. It's going to be a little bit harder to understand at first, but in the long term, this is still the best method to get ExpressLS mounted, at least for now. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up a binding phrase to the drone for this one. And if you needed to set up your radio, below is also going to be a link of a detailed tutorial step-by-step -step as of how to set up on set up a binding phrase on your radio. Let's finally begin. Okay, so to set up a binding phrase, we're first going to be coming to our computer and basically you're going to plug in this little dongle that is coming with the beta FPV package. Make sure you have this with you, otherwise you won't be able to connect to anything. So the purpose right now is we're just trying to power on the radio receiver so it can go to Wi-Fi mode and we will be able to set up uh, the binding phrase onto the receiver. Okay, so once you're done, you can also plug it in with a LiPo battery. It's fine as well, but since like the receiver can be powered on with a USB-C cable, we're just gonna do that easier. Okay, so essentially you can see that the receiver right now, this one is a receiver and it's powered on. It's glowing like a really slow, steady speed. And what, what we're trying to do right here is we're just going to wait until it goes to like a really rapid flash and that's an indication that it's already Wi-Fi ready. Let's wait about 30 seconds for it to change. Okay, so once you have seen the, the receiver is flashing like this rapid speed, the light is flashing like this rapid speed, we know that this is Wi-Fi ready. So let's switch our view to the computer. Okay, so very simple, you're just going to go to your Wi-Fi icon right here and you're just going to select the ExpressLRS RX. And if this is the first time you're trying to connect to this, you will have to enter a password, which is going to be ExpressLRS, all lowercase. So we'll, let's just connect to it. So a separate web page should pop out as soon as it's connected, like that. So we can restore. No, we don't have to. So here we can also confirm that our firmware version is on ExpressLRS 3.3.0. And the target, if you ever have to flash it, is going to be called generic express LR, a generic ESP A two A five. This is the one you wanted to have as target if you ever needed to flash it. So to set up a binding phrase, it's really simple. All you have to do is just type in your binding phrase right here, as long as it is same as your radio. So if you don't know how to set up a binding phrase for your radio, I have made a video as well just to talk about that topic, and you can just go check it out to know how to do it. The link is going to be down below. We'll just type in 354, uh, 654321. This is going to be my binding phrase. You can set up whatever you like as long it matches your radio, right? And what we're going to do, hit save. Save and reboot. 
And this is how simple it is to set up a binding phrase. So right now, theoretically, once I power up my radio, they should automatically bind together. In order to check this, we were going to switch our views into uh, beta flight. So what we're gonna do right here is I want you to bring out your radio this time. Okay, so let me make this a little bit bigger and we're gonna put our radio right here. So this is the Express LS radio TX16. So let me power this thing on. Okay, and then with your quad continue connected to the, uh, basically with the USB to your computer, Let's just actually blow it with a fan so the VTS does not overheat. Okay, you're gonna come to the software called Betaflight. If you don't know where to download Betaflight, I have leave the link below so you can just go there and download it for yourself and install yourself. All right, so let's go into Betaflight. Okay, so once we have connected to Betaflight, all we have to do is you're just gonna hit connect right here. And you can see that most of the stuff should be already set up and it should be really pretty simple that you don't have to do a lot at this stage. As this is a bind and fly, all the stuff should be activated for you. What we have to do is we just have to come to the receiver tab right here. And we just have to make sure to see if this drone is receiving any stick inputs. So currently no stick inputs. So we will have to come in to our system, you're gonna do the Express LS Lura script and you can see that right now here is saying model matching. So this one does not have model match set up, so you're gonna to have to turn off model match. So yours may be a little bit different, but if you have this problem, just go into the Lura script and you can see on the top to see if there's anything saying that model matching issue or something. If there's not, just turn this on and off and it should fix the problem. So right now, after this has been changed, you can see, you can see that we are getting stick inputs on our screen. So this is an indication that it's already mounted. And the second place we're going to go is we are going to go into the modes tab. So this is the place I want you to set up so we can set up our arm switch, angle mode, horizon mode, and also our beeper. It actually has a beeper, that's pretty impressive. If you wanted to set up your arm switch, generally, if you have a radio, this one should be aux one. So you can see that when I flip it, it's actually showing arm. Sorry, that is keep saying transmitter barrier because I forgot to charge it. So angle mode generally is gonna be aux two. So this is, yeah. If you have a pocket or something smaller like a radio, it should go like the sequence from one, two, three, four. That's, that, that should be your like sequence. Okay, so beeper currently is set as number four. So number four, I believe I set up as this one. Nope. Okay, so maybe I don't have a number four right here. Okay, so number four is currently set up right here. Yeah, so crash after flip. Okay, I don't have a, I don't have an aux three switch set up just yet. Actually, it's this one. So aux three, I set up is, this one is aux three for my crash flip. So you, So basically, there's not a lot you have to do. And all we have to do right now is we're just gonna hit save. And as for setup, setting up, the video system, we're just going to go to the video transmitter right here. You can see that this is basically already, everything is preloaded for you, so it's really simple. So you, you can select your band right here. So if you want it to be on, uh, I like to I like it to be on race band one, so I can just go directly on my goggles. And for the power, you can select like 25 to 400. So if you're not gonna fly very far, I would suggest to keep it at 25 because Otherwise, it's gonna overheat like really, really quick. So this is done. And all we have to do is we can just hit save. All right, I'm just gonna power this off so it doesn't give you like so much noise. Okay, all right, next let's go into the portion of setting up our VTX. Okay, so we're just gonna keep it at a computer since it's already powered on. Everything is powered on, including the VTX, I believe so. If not, we're just gonna power the battery. So we're just gonna use this. This is basically a FPV monitor. So it basically works same as a FPV like analog goggles. So it should be should be the somewhat similar. All we have to do is to change the channel to R1 and it should be showing up. You can see that this is already the stuff that is showing. Yeah, this is how simple it is. So now let's we can just go to the bench and we're just gonna give a quick arm disarm test to see if the motor actually spins and we can finally go test flight this thing. All right, let's get going.
Okay, so instead of going to my bench, I decided to just come to my front yard. And we're just going to test fly this thing directly. So I'm pretty confident that the motors are going to spin. Everything's going to work directly without any issue. All right, so the battery we're going to be using will be the Lava battery that Beta FPV also sent to me as well. So this is the 300 milliamps. So theoretically, this one should give you a better performance, better than the prior BT 2.0. And this particular one, 65, I think was the racing edition. So we're just going to test out to see how it performs over. And it's kind of windy a little bit right now. So we'll just see how it performs outdoor. Okay, so we're just going to slot the battery in like that. And actually, I think it goes this way. Make sure you plug it. Always plug it in the right way. Otherwise, you're going to fry it. Okay, so here we go. First test. Okay, so the footage you're seeing is coming out from a SkyZone goggle DVR. The XI model, it's going to be 040, I believe it's called OLED or something. Yeah, this one is the DVR directly. So you can see that this one actually has, uh, okay, the camera seems pretty decent right now. That it's definitely better than the Mobula 6 of the 2024 edition because, yeah, you do see a lot of details compared to that one. That one's completely washed out, but however, when you like, actually go like here you can kind of see that the background is completely gone so white right here but that's where the sun is at so it makes sense but you can see that it has a little time adjust issue yeah so these lava batteries they supposed to give you better performance but yeah let's test it out to see how it goes it's not like a full test for this video i'm just using it for my initial test so i don't have a big impression out of it like a side-by-side -side comparison to the original bt 2.0s so this one is a racing edition, but if you really want, you could still do some of the uh, freestyle tricks. Now it's kind of windy right now. And this like this is like a really light quad, so it might get caught in the wind. Yeah, this is definitely not my rates, so it's, I feel a little bit weird. Woo! Okay, yeah, it's got got caught by the wind for a second. Okay, so definitely freestyle is possible if you wanted to do it. Just make sure you. Be careful for the wind and make sure your rate is adjusted. And the pit tune right now is the default pit tune from the original beta FPV defaults. So this one definitely, yeah, I would say much better compared to the previous generation. The previous ones that you really just, it just feels, it just doesn't fly right. But this one seems that it's pretty okay, but maybe I'll just put a little bit tweak later on just to see if it's, completely okay but yeah it seems okay right now but the right now the thing that i think that is missing is the rates that that's the thing that i'm not used to yeah and also another design better a better design of this one i will believe it's going to be the canopy right now since like it's a complete stripped down canopy to save on weight it does give you some advantage like it obviously is going to be lighter but the second portion of it is going to be like you're going to get more air circulation of the VTX. So the previous meteors are just like the VTX is just so big, like so cover up that there's no air circulation at all, causing the VTX like completely to overheat a lot. And also, I think the design like improvement for this one is they actually combine the VTX into the chip, like the flight controller. I do think this is better compared to the previous gen because the previous gen, the VTX just keep on frying, breaking off, frying, breaking off, and just it's just not working. But this time they decided to free up the uh, they decided to free up the what is it called the receiver, and instead putting in the VTX in the flight controller. I think this it's really just helping. All right, so our battery is coming to 4.2. We could probably grind it a little bit just so we can have a better understanding of the average flight time of these lava batteries so 4.3 not so bad okay, let's just probably land at 4.3 then when we have uh, when we are actually recovering you should go back to 4.5 okay ooh, let's go let's go all right ah let's drop in all right all right let's land right here here, so let's land right here. 4.3. All right, 
so we are able to get about three uh, three minutes and 53 seconds so at 3.2 volts so it's not too bad like i would say so anyway so this is not going to be a video that i dive into like all the specs and details and the reviews of this product but it's just a setup guide for you to understand like uh, how to get it up in the air for your first try anyway so if you'd like to see more of this content i would greatly appreciate it if you can like and subscribe to my channel and i will see you in the next video bye for now